they can easily injure you, not even meaning to, but they're very gentle and they're very sensitive creatures and uh, I personally think they're the most intelligent life forms on the, on the planet. Hello virtuous viewers and welcome to Animal World, our co-inhabitants. Today we present the conclusion of our two-part program featuring the renowned animal rights and environmental advocate, Captain Paul Watson, legendary guardian of sea life and a true superhero. Captain Watson, the vegan founder and president of the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society, has, over the past three decades, commanded more than 200 voyages, each with the mission to protect, defend, and conserve our world's marine animals. I think a lot of animals have this intuitive ability that most humans have, have lost a long time ago. For instance, if you're diving on a coral reef and you've got a spear gun in your hand, the fish will keep their distance. They know what that is. But if you're diving with a camera in your hand, they will come right up to you. So they know what your intentions are. For instance, uh, when a dolphin looks at you, he's seeing more than just your physical form. Uh, his uh, echolocation looks right through your body, can see your blood moving in your veins, can see your, your lungs. That's why they'll try to rescue people who are drowning. They can see the water getting into the lungs. Uh, so it's almost like the, they can tell if anybody's being dishonest or if they're afraid of them or, or whatever. They can sense that far more than we can because they can literally see the workings of the internal organs. In addition to their sensitivity, Cetaceans are born geniuses. They have the largest and most complex and most evolved brains on the planet, there's no doubt about that. Uh, the human uh, brain is 1,300 cubic centimeters, but the orca is a 6,000 cubic centimeter brain. The sperm whale, the largest brain they've ever evolved, is a 9,000 cubic centimeter brain. Uh, I believe that all animals are intelligent. And to me, the key to intelligence is the ability to live in harmony with the natural world. And by that criteria, uh, humans are not that intelligent. One of the problems with people is that we associate intelligence with um, technology. If it doesn't have tools, it's not smart. We don't understand non-manipulative intelligence. The intelligence displayed by dolphins, whales, elephants, for instance, bears, uh, all are incredibly intelligent. Why do, does a whale need a telephone when it can transmit a, you know, over a thousand miles underwater? I believe that whales actually have the ability to transmit vis visual images between each other. Uh, their communication skills are vastly superior to ours. The number of actual components of humpback whale language, about two million on that, putting it together. We're spending billions of dollars searching through space for extraterrestrial life when there is intelligent life on this planet that we could be communicating with, and we're not. Scientists just go absolutely giddy at the possibility of finding bacteria on the moon Europa. But we're wiping out so many species at the same time here. Why are we so obsessed with something that's beyond our uh, atmosphere and we ignore what's going on here? The current surge of species extinctions on land and sea has been referred to as the anthropogenic period because Unlike the past five mass extinctions, one of which caused the last of the dinosaurs to disappear, the ongoing one is driven by human actions, pollution from industrial activity, hunting, fishing and animal agriculture are ongoing threats to biodiversity. Uh, large uh, drag trawlers, uh, bottom trawlers, midwater trawlers, long lines, drift nets. Uh, that kind of technology is something that uh, fish, for instance, cannot just keep up with. Uh, we're taking the fish out of the ocean far, far faster than they're able to reproduce. We have removed about 90% of the fishes from the oceans. And uh, we're taking 70 to 90 million sharks alone. Right now, we're in what the anthropologist Richard Leakey described as the world's sixth major extinction event. That means that between the year 2000 and the year 2065, we will lose more species of plants and animals to extinction than we've lost in the last 65.2 million years since uh, the end of the Jurassic period. And uh, we will be responsible for that. And, of course, uh, we could be on that list. Another tragic consequence of humanity's abuse of the ecosphere can be seen in the growing frequency of whale and dolphin strandings on beaches across our world. 
think we're having a lot of whale and dolphin strandings for the simple reason that it's a, a very painful death for a whale or a dolphin to drown. It takes a long time. And when they're afflicted with uh, a problem, they ground themselves and die on the beach. And uh, a lot of that can be caused from pollution or from uh, sonar testing. Uh, a lot of the U.S. Navy uh, sonar testing it literally bursts the eardrums of these animals, which, uh, you know, takes away their guidance systems too. But uh, you're going to see more and more of this as the oceans become more, uh, you know, a compromise with uh, sonic and, uh, and waste pollution. Do you think they also have a message through this to humans? Well, I think uh, they're certainly telling us that what we're doing to the oceans is, is not healthy. The ocean is the pump that keeps it all going as far as regulating climate, providing food, providing oxygen. 80% of the oxygen is produced by phytoplankton in the oceans. And most people just take it for granted. It's out of sight. It's out of mind. What's this got to do with me? Well, you know, it's got a lot to do with everybody because uh, the survival of the oceans means their own survival.